Uh, hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our 25th, 27th Blue Health Virtual Seminar. Uh, Blue Health Virtual Seminar is a platform that allows health professionals to discuss current management updates of different health related, related topics for better patient care. And uh, this platform is brought to you by Blue Health Ethiopia, a medical consultancy company founded by medical doctors and a computer engineer. And uh, we aim to be an influential healthcare leader in creating a skilled community through easily accessible knowledge in preventive medicine. And as always, I'm your host, Adam Getacho. I'm the co-founder and CTO uh, at Blue Ethiopia. And uh, it's a huge pleasure for us to, uh, to have Dr. Abnet Ayalo here with us. Uh, and uh, Dr. Abnet is going to give us uh, an update and a presentation on the medical error and negligence topic. And uh, Dr. Abnet Ayalo is an assistant professor uh, of uh, uh, forensics medicine and toxicology uh, at uh, St. Paul. Uh, so uh, she, will be, she will be giving us uh, the presentation. Uh, so thank you for the good introduction. Uh, as you have heard, I am Abna Tayalo. I currently work at uh, St. Paul uh, Millennium Medical College. I'm a forensic medicine and toxicology specialist. Uh, today's uh, topic would be I believe of uh, great interest uh, and it's something that most clinicians, basically all clinicians uh, and medical practitioners should know since uh, I notice there is a large gap uh, of uh, regarding the uh, legal practice of medicine and uh, how to defend that, how to go through that, uh, even uh, what's the concept of uh, what's uh, allowed medical error what's medical negligence, when is a physician uh, liable to punishment, when is a physician uh, accused of uh, ethical uh, uh, errors, and all. Uh, uh, most, uh, most clinicians and medical practitioners uh, are not aware of that. So I believe it's a, a critical topic, and I would like to extend my uh, heartfelt gratitude to Blue Health Ethiopia for being quite open and cooperative uh, for my suggestion to discuss uh, this topic. So as a forensic medicine and toxicology specialist, why am I concerned with uh, uh, this uh, topic is because the forensic medicine is, uh, uh, is a uh, specialty that's concerned with uh, legalities concerning, uh, concerning the medical uh, discipline. So it's both ways. Forensic means forum. So it's something that's debated uh, related to the law and the legal system. So when it becomes uh, forensic medicine, it deals with the legal aspects of medicine. So it's both ways. It deals with the legal uh, aspects of the medical practice. And it also deals with um, uh, evaluation of any conditions in terms of the medical uh, uh, knowledge that are related to the law. Uh, so that's why the medical uh, uh, error and negligence is a topic of concern for the forensic uh, medicine specialist. The forensic medicine specialist beyond settling cases uh, of uh, medical negligence or medical error in terms of uh, deaths and other uh, conditions, uh, the forensic medicine specialist is also a sitter in the uh, legal board of a college or even a, a court uh, to settle such things for both sides if the physician is at fault or if the system is at fault regarding the physician. Uh, so this would be why briefly uh, I'm concerned with the medical error and negligence. So we'd uh, go on with a uh, few terminologies that are used synonymously, but they have a clear uh, impact and uh, because they are different in terms of the uh, practice. So we'll see uh, moral values, what's ethics and etiquette, what's error and negligence, and what's law. These are the terminologies that we'll see, moral values, ethics and etiquette, error and negligence, and the law. Uh, so 
morals uh, generally mean what's bad or good. It uh, usually goes to uh, the goodness or the badness of the human character or behavior. And it's usually uh, a religious concept. Uh, so whatever is given as right in the religious uh, thoughts is good. And whatever is uh, wrong in the religious concepts uh, by religion, I don't mean the uh, Christianity or Islamic concepts, but generally uh, it's dogmatic principle. Morale is a dogmatic principle. It's just what's good or bad. And it's not open to discussion. It's not open to logic and it's not open to argument. It's basically a statutory, uh, static definition. Uh, so uh, moral floutings uh, are not as such, may not necessarily be uh, wrong in the eyes of the law. Uh, so they may not end in uh, uh, the physician, it may not make the physician uh, to be guilty of a certain uh, uh, aspect. It's just uh, the physician would feel guilty or there would be societal censure. So this is the significance of moral rules. This age, what are ethics? Uh, ethics is a bit uh, specialized concept. It's, uh, it comes from the word ethicals. Uh, so it means uh, stand, uh, standard of rules of conduct that govern natural disposition in human beings. Uh, etiquette is pretty much the same. It uh, includes conventional laws and customs of courtesy. So when it comes to medical ethics, it becomes uh, uh, principles uh, concerned with the medical practice. Uh, medical ethics is formed by uh, a group of people that practice the medical profession. So they define how the practice should be, how the, they put rules of conduct, how the practice should be, how a physician should raise what are acceptable, uh, uh, what are acceptable standards of behavior, uh, what's wrong in terms of the medical profession and what's right in terms of uh, the medical profession. So since these are uh, rules of conduct uh, that are formed by a group of people, uh, this group of people mean well, and they opt for uh, order uh, and rules and regulations in their practice. So whatever is, uh, whatever sounds right, whatever sounds ethical for a certain group of uh, people uh, today, uh, maybe uh, not the case for a certain group of people uh, later in time. So what I want to say is, Ethics, codes of ethics uh, are liable for change and uh, amendments and they may change as well. Uh, so uh, in the ancient times, pretty much few things were uh, included in the medical ethics, but now uh, a lot of uh, provisions are met. And uh, so that's uh, uh, ethics allows that, that's what it means since it's a rule of conduct. Uh, formed by a group of people. But still, ethics is not something that's uh, brought out of thin air or for the formed for the pleasure of uh, a certain group. It aims to bring a standard of uh, conduct that centers the patient, uh, that puts the center at the patient. And uh, so it's uh, liable for change from time to time. Uh, initially, recognized uh, uh, course of conduct exists in the medical profession. The initial principles uh, as made by uh, basically the ancient, the most ancient uh, code of uh, ethics in the medical principle in the medical profession is the Hippocratic Oath. It's about 2,500 years old and it's the uh, most ancient and the first code of conduct, code of ethics in the medical uh, profession. Uh, later on, even the Hippocratic Oath and was uh, uh, reformed. So there are declaration of Geneva in 1948 and the most recent one is in 2006. So now most uh, medical schools uh, make their graduates sign uh, the declaration of Geneva as reformed in the 2006. Uh, initially, the uh, code of conduct, uh, or generally, 
what it uh, puts as a core principle is uh, the to do no harm to the patient and the duty to do good, respect for autonomy, and to bring about natural and distributive justice to the patient. Uh, whatever the case, uh, a good code of conduct, medical conduct, uh, places the patient in the center. So you can see on the slides, the Declaration of Geneva as the most recent modification that is about 2006. Uh, states about eight patient eight points, and those are listed in the slide, so you can uh, uh, read. Uh, so, uh, code of uh, ethics uh, are not uh, laws of the court; they are just uh, code of conduct formed by a typical group of people concerning the medical profession. So, whatever uh, those code of conducts tell the physician, the uh, practicing physician, the medical practitioner is supposed to respect. However, a code of conduct is, uh, code of ethics is below the law of the nation. So whatever is allowed uh, by the law could be allowed by the code of ethics. But what's not legal and what's forbidden uh, by the law of the country uh, cannot be allowed and be practiced and permitted for practice uh, by the code of code of ethics of a medical council so uh, violations in the code of conduct in the code of ethics uh, are affected through the medical council initially uh, medical councils uh, are those that function uh, that have multiple function uh, they uh, produce medical registers of all medical practitioners uh, that are under license and practicing uh, in the current um, time. They regulate um, regulation of standards for post and undergraduate medical education. Uh, they give uh, foreign medical education recognitions, those that fit um, the system of the nation. Uh, so are recognized under medical councils. Uh, licenses and uh, registrations are also allowed uh, through the medical councils of a nation. Uh, the recognition of medical qualification, erasure of licenses are also done through uh, medical uh, councils. Uh, uh, and uh, these medical councils have appellate powers. They also have the power to do warnings and disciplinary control on medical practitioners. So violations in the code of conduct, uh, violations in the ethical um, codes in the medical practice are affected through the medical council. So whenever someone thinks or believes uh, a practitioner had been ethically wrong, uh, the appeal is to the medical council. Uh, and medical councils should receive written uh, complaints from a public, from a medical service user, from a hospital, from a colleague, or even from um, uh, courts. Uh, it has to be through a written uh, uh, complaint. Otherwise, by, by word of mouth or hearsay, uh, medical councils are not to entertain. Mm, so, what are infamous conduct or unethical conduct or professional misconduct. Uh, these are violations uh, from the ethical values. So these infamous conducts or unethical conducts are not, may not necessarily be offense to the law. They're just wrong in the eyes of the agreement agreed upon uh, codes of conduct for the medical uh, profession. Mm, so uh, what's an infamous conduct? Uh, Lord Justice Lopes defined it back in the 1984. So uh, here is a brief summary. Uh, so how is an infamous conduct defined? It's uh, a medical man in the pursuits of his profession has done something with regard to it that would be reasonably regarded as disgraceful or dishonorable by his colleagues 
of a good reputation and competency. Then it's open to the General Medical Council to say that he has been guilty of infamous conduct in a professional respect. Uh, so it may not necessarily be offense to the law, it may not be a crime, it may not be a negligence, uh, but it's called infamous conduct or unethical uh, conduct in the professional regard whenever uh, a behavior or an action of a medical professional is found as disgraceful or dishonorable uh, as judged by his professional brothers of good reputation and competency. Uh, so these uh, points are discussed so far. So what are the examples of infamous conduct or unethical conduct for the medical profession? Uh, so initially violations of whatever is put as uh, a good medical uh, or ethical conduct for the medical profession. Uh, however, it's violated, uh, it's con considered as infamous conduct. Apart from what's stated in the Code of Ethics, uh, there are certain examples that are usually cited as infamous conduct. So these are listed. Uh, for example, if a person is, uh, if a medical professional or a doctor is found to have associations with unqualified persons, for example, if a person owns a hospital and uh, employs an unqualified person, uh, or aids or assists that uh, unqualified person to do uh, unethical uh, uh, acts like uh, to write medical certificates or to perform beyond skill. For example, a house surgeon may not be allowed to do uh, complicated uh, surgeries, but if a hospital uh, owner, a doctor um, allows a house surgeon to perform a, a complicated uh, surgery that's still uh, considered as an infamous conduct. When you go to the negligence, if you want to know if it's a crime or if it's a, still offense to the law, uh, a lot of things have to be considered before you call that medical negligence or medical crime. But still, uh, allowing an unqualified person to do uh, certain acts beyond his skill uh, is whatever, whether it's a um, crime or uh, negligence, uh, it's something that is something the court says. However, it's still an infamous conduct on the side of the uh, medical professional who allowed, assisted or employed that person. Uh, the other thing is advertising. Advertising by the law is not uh, wrong. But however, a uh, medical professional is not to use the commercialization of his practice uh, so that he makes an impression that he is uh, advanced in his uh, career, the others are uh, less competent, that, or that he has something uh, special to provide for his patients and so on. Since advertising creates that uh, impact, still advertising, even giving out uh, large banners where the name is displayed uh, in large fonts, where it's seen in public, like in uh, close to nightclubs or whatever, uh, uh, advertising in such ways, even repeated advertising on TVs uh, and uh, public medias uh, is considered as a medically uh, infamous conduct. Advertising, uh, it depends on the rule of the country. However, it's not an offense, uh, but it's still an infamous conduct since it affects the practice of the others and it gives the impression that the practice of this certain doctor is special and better than the others. The other one is adultery. Uh, adultery means uh, associating with the opposite sex in a, a romantic uh, relationship in a sexual relationship with a person who is not known by the law as the spouse of that uh, medical uh, professional. So is adultery uh, legally wrong? It depends on the law of the country. Uh, however, adultery is still an infamous conduct for the uh, medical professional. Some laws, some countries allow 
that uh, man is uh, at crime, at fault if he commits adultery, but the woman is not. For example, Indian law uh, allows that. Indian law does not hold uh, a medical doctor or whatever if she's a female, even though she goes out of her uh, marital wedlock uh, and involves with someone else, it's still the man that's held uh, responsible, that's at crime. Uh, so adult, is adultery a crime? American law, for example, allows adultery. Adultery is not a uh, legal offense. So if it's a legal offense, it's something that the law, the court settles. But still, adultery for the medical professional is an infamous conduct. It's ethically wrong. Um, so uh, same goes with abortion. Criminal abortion is a crime. However, uh, attempting, assisting, uh, and even covering criminal abortions, uh, still it's an infamous conduct. Whether uh, the occurrence has been um, actually happening, uh, if a lady has undergone uh, a criminal abortion by a medical professional, or if she has gone uh, under a certain damage. Uh, so if the act consists of uh, an offense to the law, uh, again, it depends on the law of the country, the damage the um, female in question has sustained and or. However, it's still an ethical act for a medical practitioner to involve in uh, uh, abortion in any capacity. Uh, use of unsterile instruments usage, uh, wrong information deliverance, for example, telling uh, someone who had a benign uh, tumor uh, that he has cancer and that needs uh, operation and uh, further conditions, it's still an infamous conduct. Uh, some conditions are both uh, a crime and an infamous conduct. Uh, some conditions are just infamous conduct, uh, not necessarily offense. Uh, so arranging replacement of caregiver without prior information to the patient before telling the patient that you wouldn't be available as is a primary caregiver. Uh, so if you make the patient discover that you have been replaced or you have left the hospital or you have uh, arranged for a replacement for a certain time, uh, the care the patient may not be able to win uh, damage in the court uh, for a compensation he may not be liable for a compensation since all that matters is that he has been taken care of and uh, no further damage has uh, been uh, affected however ethically a physician and medical practitioner is supposed to inform the patient if he is going to put a replacement uh, to uh, deliver the care. So it's an ethical wrong, arranging for a replacement uh, of a caregiver without priorly informing uh, the patient. So these are some examples. Uh, medical ethics is a vast topic and it needs uh, practical illustrations uh, and a lot of reading and discussions. It's not something that comes straightforward. It's not a set of rules. Uh, when you are faced with the cases, it's a lot of uh, conditions to consider. Uh, however, and it would be better if we could have a separate session on medical ethics. What are the duties of the patient? What are voluntary duties? What are compulsory duties? What does the doctors owe to the state? What does the state owe to the doctor? Uh, what are the responsibilities of the patient, what's right, what's wrong, and all. Uh, those are covered under medical ethics, so I would appreciate it if we could have a, a separate session regarding medical ethics, since we have given the um, uh, topic for today's session as medical error and uh, negligence, I would be focusing on that, but still, uh, it would be difficult for you, for participants, if you don't know what's ethics and if you don't know what's uh, wrong and crime or negligence in the eyes of the law. Uh, so I brought this uh, few slides as an introduction. Uh, otherwise, uh, medical ethics needs uh, a separate coverage. And so these are some of the uh, infamous conducts, ethical wrongs, you can see on the slides. Uh, they include failure to report an ethical act by colleagues, 
uh, it may not necessarily be wrong, it may not necessarily be a crime, but you could see your colleagues uh, involving in unethical acts. So if you're a bystander in that, you're still committing an infamous conduct. Uh, similarly, if you tell about your colleagues of parallel reputation, uh, of disparaging and infamous uh, notes to patients, to others, or even uh, for unconcerned uh, parties, uh, that's still an infamous conduct. Uh, dichotomy and receiving commission, sending or receiving commission for uh, referring patients while they could uh, receive the treatment at the same station as you are. Uh, if you have an arrangement to send patients and her thereby uh, you would receive money commission for the uh, your uh, referral of patients to a certain place, to a certain doctor or to a certain hospital, that's still ethical wrong. It may be very difficult uh, that you have done that uh, and uh, that it has been cr a, cr a criminal uh, act, it's usually very difficult to prove, but it's still uh, an ethical act. The other one is improper association with drug manufacturers and receiving uh, vacations, uh, receiving other benefits than uh, work-related benefits, and hence uh, uh, leniency to show, uh, to do prescriptions, to write prescriptions of a certain drug manufacturer. Even writing drugs in um, brand names uh, other than their generic names is still an infamous uh, conduct, uh, ethically wrong conduct, and having an association with uh, a certain drug manufacturers and doing those things is quite uh, an infamous conduct, an ethical one. Uh, even attending a patient whom you know to have been under the care of another practitioner whom you know your friend is already taken care of, or whom you know, uh, some other patient of same reputation, of same stance, is already taken care of him. So uh, buying that patient over or interfering uh, in the care of the other medical practitioner and winning the patient over to your practice is still uh, an uh, infamous conduct. Uh, making segregations uh, on patients uh, based on religious and racial backgrounds is also uh, an ethical conduct. Uh, the physician ethically is allowed to uh, select which patients to treat and which patients not to. However, doing that selection based on religious and racial grounds is an ethical conduct. So the court uh, may not have enough proof that uh, that has been done on that basis. But however, the medical council, if the uh, believes that uh, you have done the segregation, you have denied or granted a service based on a religious or racial or whatever back, uh, background, uh, could uh, do uh, warnings or disciplinary measures or erasures of your licenses or whatever, whatever the medical council believes is appropriate for the uh, action. So uh, that's it as an introduction to medical uh, ethics. Uh, how is medical error, medical practice, and uh, negligence defined? Error is generally a, sta a general state. It states uh, a condition uh, or a state of being wrong in conduct or judgment. So that's error generally. So medical error is going to be a general term. It's everything. Uh, it includes all states and conditions where there were wrong actions and or outcomes by the medical profession. Uh, unfortunately, the medical error is such an umbrella term and it does not differentiate between civil wrong, therapeutic misadventure or uh, negligence. So in medical error, we have to that me So acceptable nagar no, uh, unforeseen no, should the physician be more careful? Was the physician negligent? Or yalta yanagar no, expect yalta davaganagar, or already physician who war nargotal patient to, in the rare complication and behold. Or the more, the miak aumatan war nargot, 
አንፎርቹኒቲ የሆነ ነገር ቢፈጠርም ስቲል እንደ ሜዲካል ኤራር ሊቆጠር ይችላል ግን it does mean the physician has been negligent it does mean it was wrong or uh, whatever so medical error just sees the outcome it sees the action and the outcome and it, it just evaluates if it was a precedented if it just evaluates if it was a right or wrong outcome desired or undesired outcome so medical error is uh, a general term and it needs to be if someone is to be held liable for whatever unethical conduct or negligence or uh, therapeutic misadventure or whatever it has to come to a better dissection of terms so you have to know what you have done wrong you cannot be generally accused of a medical error medical error is generally a, a very umbrella term so what's the view on medical errors and negligence is it something are medical errors something that we could uh, avoid completely uh, if we take enough care and uh, if we evaluate risks and benefits and if we know the updates on the current practice if we are bookworms and know whatever the books state from uh, a to z are we able to avoid medical errors are they something avoidable and should the physician be uh, or the medical practitioner be uh, responsible and held accountable for everything that goes wrong in the medical practice so let's see the uh, modern view on medical errors so this is my reference uh, lord denning uh, in the case of hatcher and uh, versus black and others so this person was uh, uh, i'll ask it to bring he's a british medical officer and he was asked to accuse uh, a person of uh, a medical practitioner uh, that he would have been able to avoid uh, a certain risk a certain occurrence uh, of uh, an undesired outcome in his practice if he was uh, careful enough so this is what he had said uh, on the road or in the factory there ought to be it, maybe it's possible to uh, deduct or reduce uh, occurrence of accidents if everyone used proper care however in a hospital when a person was ill and came in for the treatment no matter what care was used there is always a risk and it would be wrong and bad law to say that simply because a mishap occurred the hospital and doctors were liable so every unfortunate and undesired outcome uh, is not the fault of the hospital and the doctors indeed it would be a disastrous a disastrous law to uh, the community so uh, what does this mean if we make the uh, hospital and the doctor at fault for everything that went wrong in the medical practice it would mean that the doctor examining a patient or a surgeon operating at the table instead of uh, doing their work with passion and uh, care they would be checking for seeing over their shoulder to see if someone is uh, coming up with a dagger someone is going to accuse them someone is to level them uh, unnecessarily for uh, negligence or whatever so however careful a uh, medical practitioner will be there are always risks that are inherent so uh, what's expected of the medical practitioner is to take enough uh, care to be uh, quite negligent less negligent negligence should be at minimum and there should be willfulness uh, to treat the patient at the best interest with the maximum care with the reasonable skill and keep those risks of uh, medical mishappings to minimum that's all you can do you cannot avoid errors or undesirable uh, actions or undesirable effects in the medical uh, practice mm, so uh, it's important that you understand malpractice or negligence is not the mere presence of unfavorable outcomes as wrong diagnosis or death so if these are the mere occurrences are not to be labeled as negligent or uh, malpractice so what are actually what's actually a malpractice or negligence when are you asked when are you held accountable for 
malpractice or negligence you would see um, on the slides. Uh, malpractice means any professional misconduct that encompasses. Uh, it's related malpractice means to the uh, lack of care and skill in the professional behavior. Uh, so it could be part of the general uh, professional negligence. Professional negligence is a broader term. It encompasses malpractice yeah. and other aspects. So professional negligence uh, is uh, effective through commission. It's doing what a reasonable person of same stance would not do, or it's omission. It's not doing or missing out on a on an action what which was what a reasonable person of the same stance would do. So professional negligence is, is either commission of what a reasonable person of the same reputation wouldn't do, or omission, missing out what a, what a reasonable person of the same practice uh, would do. Uh, so in law of thought, negligence has two meanings. One is uh, the guilty mind. It, it encompasses with mental element. Uh, it means to do things uh, carelessly, to trespass, uh, or to speak of um, unfavorable actions. So it uh, goes with the mental element. The second one, which usually goes with the medical negligence, is uh, separately considered, and it's the conduct that creates a risk of causing damage. The damage is usually uh, required to have occurred, but there are also cases uh, where the risk is only evaluated, where the risk is only enough to label uh, an action as uh, negligence. So medical negligence goes with the second uh, definition mostly in the law of torts. So this is medical negligence generally. It's lack of reasonable care and skill or willful negligence. You have the skill, you have the care, you know what to do, but you ignore it willfully. So even uh, ignore, ignorance goes on to waste. Ignorance of a possible danger or ignorance of what you should do. So this is a medical negligence. And beyond that, when you come to criminal medical negligence, it's not just mere carelessness. It's rather neglect or willful careless act where there is a legal duty when you're legally bound to take care of that patient and the failure uh, to have the reasonable care and skill uh, or the neglect or willful careless act uh, causes injury or damage to the patient. So this injury or damage is uh, critical in the labeling of medical negligence by a doctor. So what does reasonable skill mean? Uh, it's a very difficult uh, concept to put a standard on. Whatever is a reasonable skill that a general practitioner in the uh, European setup is supposed to have may not work for our setup or for Africa or for Asia. Whatever works and is a reasonable skill for a specialist doctor in America may not be applicable for the same doctor in Egypt. So what's a, a reasonable skill? It's, you know, when you're asked of uh, or accused of lack of a reasonable skill, uh, you're not judged against. Usually you're not judged against uh, a universal law. You're judged against uh, what your professional colleagues would call reasonable skill. So the reasonable skill is the average skill possessed by his professional colleagues of the same standing as himself. So this is the uh, definition of uh, negligence. So is, I think the mere question that everybody, every practitioner wants to know is uh, if you miss a diagnosis or if you stepped, if you skipped a step in a treatment or if you gave a wrong treatment to the patient, would you be asked of, would you be responsible for a medical negligence? So a misdiagnosis uh, or a misstep or a, a mistake in the treatment is not necessarily a negligence. What matters is uh, if you had been applying proper care, if you have been reasonable in your uh, diagnosis, 
and if you had the necessary reasonable skills. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're not supposed to diagnose all your patients accurately, and you're not supposed to give standard treatment for everyone. You're bound to make mistakes. However, it matters that you didn't do that out of negligence, and uh, it matters that you did not forget what a reasonable person of average stance would have done. So if you miss such a diagnosis because of carelessness or because you did not have enough knowledge, uh, what most of your colleagues would have uh, diagnosed, if you miss that, uh, you may be accused of negligence. But it's, you're not supposed to diagnose a rare complication of a disease, however it's common, uh, or you're not supposed to treat accurately a case that you don't see uh, as frequently, or a case you have never seen in your medical practice, or, or whatever, a case is very rare in your area of practice. So you're not supposed to know the diagnosis and be treating the patient uh, right away uh, in the right and proper manner or uh, the standard of care. What matters is if you have applied your knowledge to the best interest of the patient, if you have been quite uh, considerate of his condition. If you like miss uh, shock in the uh, hypovolemic shock or septic shock in a case of a patient with uh, septic diarrhea, uh, that's not uh, acceptable. That may not be acceptable. But uh, however, if you miss a complication of, let's say, a pulmonary tuberculosis or a disseminated tuberculosis, a very rare diagnosis, a very rare complication, uh, of a uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. However common the condition of pulmonary tuberculosis is, if the complication is quite rare, and if you're not uh, supposed to know, uh, if it's not something you encounter commonly, and if uh, most of your uh, colleagues would not know, would not diagnose the condition accurately as well, so you're free. Uh, of, you will not be accused of medical negligence. Uh, similarly, uh, what a, a general practitioner is supposed to know is different from uh, what a specialist is supposed to know. What a specialist is supposed to know is different from what a subspecialist is supposed to know. So uh, the, the standard of care, uh, what's labeled as reasonable skill and reasonable treatment, reasonable diagnosis, depends on the level of uh, your uh, knowledge, your education. Um, if you're a general practitioner, maybe you could be asked, you could be liable for omitting consultation other than uh, managing a patient accurately. But if you're a specialist, maybe you're responsible for uh, diagnosing the patient or under your specialty accurately, uh, similarly for a subspecialist. So the judgment is um, with your uh, uh, the judgment is done uh, uh, with the average skill and uh, care the professional colleagues of a parallel level have. So what, uh, what constitutes negligence? When is uh, a physician uh, effectively accused of a negligence? And when is a patient uh, allowed for compensations by the court uh, after he has proven a medical uh, negligence. So the practices may be very uh, bizarre or different or unconditional or um, unlikely from what the public generally knows. But it matters that just because a practice feels weird, just because a treatment somebody gives uh, and a doctor gives is different from what we're used to, it doesn't mean the doctor is negligent or is responsible for a medical negligence. So when is a, a medical negligence uh, diagnosed? There are four Ds. Um, one is duty. The other is the election of duty. The third one is uh, direct causation. And the fourth one is damage. So in the case that these four components, these four elements are not uh, fulfilled, 
the diagnosis of medical negligence is not complete. Uh, so the physician, unless in exceptions of, uh, few exceptions of criminal negligence, in the absence of these four uh, elements, cannot be accused of um, medical negligence, to have committed medical negligence. So what's the duty in case of uh, the medical practice? It's still a broad term to define, but duty means a standard of behavior imposing restrictions on one's conduct. Mm, so uh, what you're supposed to do? Get data, legal, legally bound So a duty uh, is imposed on the doctor or whenever there is implication of therapeutic intent. For the purpose of feeling capacity, like accept the patient, uh, you have a duty. That's what it means. Uh, so, for that, for the duty to exist, there needs to be a doctor patient relationship established. This uh, doctor patient relationship should be a clear one, uh, it should not be a secret or a mysterious. Uh, way of a relationship, it should be a clear one, and uh, it applies in case of it's not necessarily about uh, treating, administering drugs or uh, diagnosing or admission or whatever. Uh, it also applies even in advices. If you give a careless advice, it's the same uh, as giving a careless uh, treatment. So even for advices and referrals. If you refer your patient to a certain someone that you know is not competent, that you know, uh, or the medical council has erased his license, uh, you know that the doctor you're referring to does not have those skills uh, or is even rampant and reckless in his uh, medical practice, you're still uh, accused of negligent choice, negligent referral. It's still a medical negligence, referrals, and even therapeutic advices. So uh, there are exceptions to implied contract of doctor-patient relationship. What does this mean? This means when there is the doctor and the patient, but the relationship is not uh, maintained. The relationship is not uh, uh, the relationship is not established. The first one is uh, evaluation for first aid in case of emergencies. If you're not the treating physician, you're just supposed to do the life-saving measures and refer the patient to his uh, doctor. In that case, uh, you're only asked to not have missed life-threatening conditions. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the conditions depend on uh, um, if the patient is going to continue treatment with you, if he's going to uh, offer the uh, required uh, payment and fees, and all uh, that establishes the doctor-patient relationship. But if you're just involving for a case of first aid uh, in an emergency, just to save and maintain the life of that patient, you're not responsible for the, you're not on duty, doctor-patient relationship is not uh, uh, obviously um, formed, so you're not responsible. The case of the unconscious patient, uh, where the patient is not aware of the doctor's existence, it's a debatable concept if there is a doctor-patient relationship. Uh, so it's one of the cases where the um, doctor-patient relationship establishment is under scrutiny. If you're evaluating for insurance, if you're evaluating under custody, a patient under custody, under custody mean, for example, a person under the detention of the police could be brought to you so that you evaluate them for a certain legal condition. Let's say the patient, the police wants to uh, collect evidence if the person has been unassailant in a case of uh, rape. So that, uh, is a case uh, under custody and you're not there in your healing capacity. You're not there to treat the uh, patient. So in that case, the doctor-patient relationship is not established uh, also for medical legal evaluations. Like I said, if a person has a civil case, 
uh, of uh, inference claims, let's say, or inheritance claims. Uh, and he comes for his age uh, requested by the court to be determined. Uh, so he's there to be evaluated. He's not there to be treated. So medical legal evaluations, evaluations under studies, uh, evaluation for insurance purposes. Uh, these are the exceptions where the doctor patient relationship is not maintained. This is also a topic covered in medical ethics. So if we get to do the seminar on medical ethics, uh, we'd see these things uh, in detail. So uh, duty when a person, when a medical practitioner is uh, accused of uh, having had a duty of treatment uh, and having breached that, it should be based on reasonable foreseeability of injury. Uh, so what's reasonable is again brought to discussion. So some people are just very cautious and they are careful. They are uh, in the practice as if they are uh, with a fight with a lion. Uh, some people are just negligent. Uh, so what's reasonable uh, foreseeability of injury means? Um, a reasonable person is presumed to be free from both over uh, apprehension and from overconfidence. So still, what's reasonable, what's overconfidence, what's over apprehension in Milam Nagar? Still, it's uh, subjectively judged uh, in Nagar. So medical negligence is judged under the court. Uh, so it's for the court to decide. Reasonable uh, injury, reasonably foreseeable injury in a better way, still court to not decide me It's a subjective matter. However, uh, but I'm uh, unforeseen uh, injuries still in a consider better but to the mill extent. So here is an example. A patient uh, transfused with a compatible blood. Compatibility of blood was checked as much as the setup allowed. And the patient was uh, under um, an emergency condition. So the physician went on and checked for compatibility and transfused the patient. Uh, unfortunately, the patient developed serum hepatitis. So serum hepatitis is not a very common uh, complication. And it's, a, it's not uh, something that occurs commonly. Uh, also, the condition of the patient required uh, emergency uh, transfusion of blood. And uh, with the available taste, the physician has checked for compatibility of blood. So um, the court uh, ruled out that he was not supposed to be in the capacity to have considered the occurrence of, and it's not, maybe it's not something that he could have uh, prevented from occurring. So still, uh, there may be a case where a court uh, says, if you have considered, uh, if you have seen uh, the textbooks on uh, this blood dyscariasis and uh, transfusion emergencies, uh, serum hepatitis is one risk. Uh, so the court may have <clears throat> ruled out that the patient, the physician have not performed his duty carefully. Uh, but in this case, uh, they considered that it was in an emergency. They considered that uh, the physician has checked for compatibility of blood as much as the uh, setup has allowed. And he was not supposed to foresee such a rare complication. And maybe it's not something that he could have also uh, stopped from occurring. So uh, level of reasonable care and duty and outcome is defined uh, in accordance with the situation of occurrence. Uh, there are a few other points to consider. Uh, for example, uh, doctor working in an emergency with inadequate facilities and under great pressure uh, is not supposed to um, achieve the same results as a doctor who is working in ideal conditions. So it matters. Your thinking capacity, your judgment capacity matters uh, when you're working under stress, when you have to take care of a lot of patients, when you have a lot of emergencies and it matters the facilities.
facilities, if you have adequate facilities as well. Uh, also, it's the mental stress that you go under uh, is as well uh, to be taken in consideration. So this is all to say, uh, duty, reasonable care, reasonable skill, me balus nagaroch. Uh, they are uh, subjectively, and not with accord with uh, in accordance with the situation of occurrence. Now judge me direct. So the other thing is junior doctors still practical, they still need to learn from practical cases. So if they are allowed to work on practical cases, uh, they're definitely going to encounter cases they have not uh, met uh, before, they have not seen before. So they are uh, obviously going to make uh, mistakes in diagnosis and treatment in a lot of concepts. So junior doctors, the court um, as well considers that the medical profession, the medical practice, the medical education uh, is to be done on uh, practical patients. They also consider that into, into consideration. So junior, a junior doctor is more uh, actionable for omission of consultation. He should ask for help. He should ask for uh, opinion of his senior, or even opinion of uh, uh, a person of uh, parallel labor. So a junior doctor is most likely to be held accountable for omission of consultation than a misdiagnosis or uh, lack of care and skill in certain cases. Of course, it matters uh, uh, in case of uh, reasonable care and skill as well. There is a reasonable care and skill, uh, no matter what junior a doctor is expected uh, of, but still regarding the complicated cases, uh, he's more uh, to be responsible for omission of consultation than an accurate diagnosis and the standard treatment. Uh, in this case, uh, if you have seen present day practice, uh, a single patient is to be evaluated and treated by a multiple uh, discipli disciplines both paramedical, uh, legal, medical legal, and medical. So it's very difficult uh, to coin a specific role. It's very difficult to say that it's a sing which uh, single doctor was uh, not performing his duty accurately or whose uh, action resulted in the said damage, in the said omission of care, in the said uh, injury. So the, the, that's also considered when you, when a medical negligence is to be coined to a certain person. So th this case, it becomes uh, very difficult to accuse a person of medical negligence. What's uh, the legal system taking advantage of is because the medical professionals do not know what's medical error, what's a civil wrong, what they're allowed to do what they're not allowed to do, what's a medical negligence, what's a criminal negligence. So the legal system is taking, and the public is taking advantage of that. Otherwise, if you go to the uh, rightful steps, it's very difficult to prove in uh, most cases of claim, uh, medical negligence is very tough to uh, prove. It's not as common as you hear on the media or uh, uh, everywhere else, someone, doctors being responsible for medical negligence and errors right and left. No, uh, the other thing is a doctor is not to be labeled to have been negligent until the court proves beyond reasonable doubt. He's not even supposed to be harassed and uh, uh, labeled uh, by hearsays. It's only the court that can. Uh, label uh, doctor to have been negligent, professionally negligent in a permalet in Chile court to the channel. And the court has certain steps. Uh, this uh, ingredients, these elements of negligence should be fulfilled. Uh, it should discuss with uh, medical counsels. It should call for expert witnesses. Uh, if it's necessary, if the case is of death, it should call for autopsies. It should consider a lot of things before Labeling, labeling a doctor as a, to have been professionally negligent. 
unfortunately, since the clinician, since the medical uh, practitioner population does not have uh, the information, does not have the knowledge on what's uh, medical negligence, the legal system is uh, and the public is taking advantage of that. So what's the election? The second uh, component is uh, the election. The election means uh, seno formation. There was a duty and there is the uh, election of duty. So it means generally that a person who should have done something has omitted. The person who was legally bound to do something has omitted a certain act. This is uh, the other uh, component that's very difficult to uh, prove. The first thing is, the court doesn't know what's a standard of care. So uh, for the court to decide there has been re-election, there has been omission uh, of a certain act, they have to know what was uh, to be done. If you have to decide that a certain something was uh, omitted, you have to know that it should have been there. So the court is not made up of uh, uh, medical people. It's not made up of uh, people who went to medical school. They don't know the medical practice. They don't know the standard of care. Uh, so it's very difficult to prove that a certain act was omitted and uh, more importantly, intentionally omitted. Uh, so in this case, what's uh, the court supposed to do? It's uh, to call for expert witness. Expert witness, expert means, expert witness means uh, someone in an expert capacity who has the knowledge, the skill, the practice, and the awareness of a certain specific uh, discipline. So in this case, expert witness in different disciplines, different uh, individuals. So in this case, expert witness, uh, nurses in the practice, doctors in the practice, uh, who can explain, or physiotherapists or whatever, uh, are responsible and currently practicing potentially in the same uh, institution. So those are expert witnesses in this case. So the court will call, needs to call for expert witness so that those people would uh, explain uh, what's the standard and what is being practiced. As I told you, uh, a medical practitioner is judged uh, and expected to have a reasonable care in accordance with the practice, the current practice he is currently working at. So this expert witnesses will explain what's the standard and what's being practiced. So whoever is alleged of a medical negligence is to be judged on, based on what's currently being practiced, what his colleagues are practicing, what his institutions, institution is accepting as a standard of care. So it's, uh, the election is uh, omission of care or skill. And it's um, evaluated through an expert witness mostly. Um, so this is uh, an example uh, where consumer disputes redressal form uh, held the hospital guilty of unfair trade practices along with negligence. So the forum uh, observed there was no uh, document to suggest whether the complaining patient or his family members were told by the hospital that angioplasty on two vessels uh, which were blocked was not conducted. There are two concentrators, but in none of these letters, this fact is mentioned. It appears that the fact regarding the blockage of other two vessels of the patient was being concealed from him and his family. It must have been considered so that the patient does not come to know that a part of the job has been completed and treatment of other two vessels is to be done after which uh, uh, is to be done for which the patient may come again after four to six months. Uh, so uh, this is from uh, a case in India. That's why the uh, currencies are expressed in lakh. Lakh means uh, thousands in uh, India. So the hospital was told to pay because that information was omitted. So there is a direct election of duty on the part of the uh, doctor and the hospital. So that uh, the patient was not informed. The consent, the informed consent did not state which uh, vessels were to be the, uh, 
uh, to be operated on now and that there was also a remaining operation to be performed after a certain time. So since this was omitted and it was since it was the duty of the uh, treating uh, physician and the uh, hospital to have informed the patient exactly of what was being done to him and if he had uh, if he was to have subsequent follow-ups and all those information should have been informed to the patient should have been delivered to the patient however uh, since that part was omitted there is dereliction of duty there is a scene of omission and it's usually assumed to be done intentionally and so unless in a few uh, cases dereliction is more uh, difficult to uh, prove uh, so omission of uh, x-rays and mistaken diagnosis, uh, do they account for uh, the election of uh, duty? So like I said, uh, mistake in diagnosis is negligent only if it implies an absence of due care or skill. Diagnosis we have met because of the absence of normally what a reasonable person should have done. Omitted by Mohon Makniat Kohona, a misdiagnosis could be uh, an act of negligence. Otherwise, generally, because the diagnosis was missed, uh, it depends. Man, in Siarago, Minden, or practice, who, uh, how common is the diagnosis? Man, Milus Nagar, Fitayalu. Otherwise, just because there was a misdiagnosis, uh, negligence uh, proven, Adel. It has to be proven that it was because of the misdiagnosis happened because of uh, negligent acts of absence of due care or skill and uh, proved more uh, Failure to x-ray, this is the common question we get as forensic specialists, failure to x-ray. So uh, omission of x-rays, omission of imaging. So it depends, again, uh, you cannot label failure to x-ray generally as a negligent act. For example, uh, in case of uh, patients that have sustained trauma to the head, uh, significance of uh, skull x-ray is not as such that important. Uh, wh whether the skull has fractured or not uh, is not the mere indicator of uh, prognosis or it does not dictate what the treatment should have been. It's rather the neurological, clinical neurological evaluation of the patients. So currently indication is to favor the results of the clinical neurological evaluation. Uh, so it's just unlikely that uh, a physician, a doctor, or a medical practitioner uh, to be uh, responsible, to be held accountable for uh, failure to x-ray a patient with trauma to the head. Uh, what if the case is in the case of injuries to the limb, especially where there was a possibility of fracture, where uh, clinical judgments were not uh, certain, where there is a possibility of dislocation or entrapment of foreign bodies in the wound, this may amount to if the medical practitioner failed to um, x-ray, to take x-ray of the limb in such cases. Uh, the relaxation of duty, Leila uh, case, no? So, uh, the third one is direct causation. Uh, the damage uh, should, uh, whatever the plaintiff is uh, accusing the physician of, uh, he should prove that the damage was the direct result of the negligence. In this case, the bad for taste is applied. So what does it mean? Had it not been for the negligent act of the physician, would the condition have occurred? Uh, that's what it means, direct causation. So if it was interrupted by any uh, unforeseen condition uh, and it cannot be proven that the damage the physician, the patient uh, uh, sustained was not direct causation, was not directly caused by the negligent act, uh, still the diagnosis of medical negligence cannot be made. So this is the application of the bad for test. Um, so let's see where this is not uh, uh, possible. Uh, the second example, 
Dr. Srilay in diagnosis of a highly aggressive malignant neoplasm. Uh, since nothing, since the patient is already in the end stage of the, uh, his uh, disease, and whether it was uh, diagnosed at that stage, uh, at the initial visit or at the 10th day, uh, patient's chance of survival may not have been affected. So since the damage could not be proved to be of directly caused by the negligent act, um, the doctor may not be accountable for medical negligence. Uh, the other one is the damage suffered by the patient. There should be an injury or disability suffered by the patient. Uh, so the whole three components may be fulfilled, but since if there is no damage, if there is no injury or there is no disability, uh, if there are no costs unnecessarily encountered by the patient due to the acts of the physician, uh, there cannot be made the diagnosis of uh, medical negligence. Uh, so the, let's see the example below. A patient visited the hospital for diarrhea and fever. The doctor prescribed antibiotics, potentially ciproflaxacillin, and the patient uh, was cured. After he was cured, the patient uh, started to revise his prescription and he realized the prescription contained the diagnosis of acute cystitis. And so the patient went to the court, uh, suing the doctor that he had been treated for a misdiagnosis. Uh, but the charges of uh, negligence were overruled because the prescribed antibiotics have not caused damage. They have rather cured the patient. So what's damage and damages? Damages are the financial compensations. Redress at la madrak, gain mi aragat, order mi daragut the court to damage si balalu. Their damage is the injury or heart or disability the, or mental damage the patient might have suffered. Damages are the financial compensation. So they are done in two forms. There are general damages and there are special damages. Uh, so uh, what's, uh, what can be done when that is assumed uh, to have been the damage uh, by the family and relatives? If the family and relatives believe that the death of their uh, family member was because of the negligent act of the uh, uh, doctor, so autopsy is the ideal procedure in this case. Uh, autopsy should be complete, um, possibly, and all uh, laboratory studies, uh, toxicological studies, enzymatic studies, and histopathological studies are advised to be uh, conducted. And the autopsy physician should not right away decide uh, on the cause of death. He should rather discuss with the concerned clinicians regarding the expected care, the diagnosis, and all. Uh, he should call for specialists and even at the end, the autopsy surgeon uh, should only comment on the cause of death and the circumstances leading to death. He should not uh, and is not allowed to give uh, there was acts of negligence. This is due to medical negligence. The physician did this, he should be held responsible. Me comment or must attack back button. He shouldn't. Pronouncing uh, a medical practitioner as uh, negligent, medically uh, or professionally negligent, is only the court. Uh, so, uh, proof of negligence, civil now, uh, criminal negligence, which are later on in Ireland. So, how is it proved? Uh, especially in civil cases, it's the patient that should prove that there was a duty, the election of duty damage is incurred uh, and the damage was due to direct direct cause uh, of the negligent act uh, so the physician is not supposed to go to the court uh, or approach the court or the uh, forum and prove his innocence he's not expected to it's rather the patient who should 
approve that the, there was an act of negligence and uh, on the side of the uh, physicians. So uh, where is uh, an exception to this case where the, uh, the one that should prove um, that he had been innocent in his uh, practice uh, is the physician, is the case uh, known as res ipsa locator. This case means the action speaks for itself. You don't need for, uh, the, you, the patient does not need to prove that there is uh, uh, something that has uh, been done by the physician and uh, that has uh, uh, resulted in the damage. In this case, the action speaks louder and the action speaks for itself. So it's the doctor that needs to prove his innocence or it's the doctor that needs to prove that the patient has also contributed or it's the doctor that uh, needs to prove that uh, he was not the one responsible for that. That's the, these are the exceptions. Otherwise, whoever, whenever a patient claims that uh, he has suffered damage because of medical negligence of the physician, it's the duty uh, rests or on the patient. Claim me other cause how I know. Proof of burden of proof in Miracle, except in few cases. So what are the cases of recipes are like it there? Initially, there should be three essential elements. Uh, the first one is the injury or the damage uh, is commonly known. You don't need expert witness. You don't need uh, uh, proof. Uh, but uh, without the occurrence of that negligence, it couldn't have happened. It's a, it's a straightforward case. Uh, so the second component is uh, it's where the doctor was in exclusive control. He cannot attribute it to uh, the control of others. So it's, it has to occur in an area where the doctor is in exclusive control. The third one is the patient should not have contributory negligence. So if there is something that, uh, that can be proven that the patient had also uh, contribution to the case, it does not uh, go to the case of recipes allocator. So we'll see a few examples. Uh, the common example is retention of swabs, packs and drains in the cavity. Uh, still, uh, these uh, swabs, packs and uh, drains in the cavity should uh, cause complications and damages for them to account for recipes allocator. The other one is amputation of the wrong limb, administration of the wrong medication. This is easier said than done because wrong medication has its own uh, definitions. What do we mean by wrong medication? Was it the dose? Was it the wrong solution? Uh, was it the administration? Was it the solution that it was diluted in? Uh, was it expired one? Was it a different medication put in a different container? Uh, so wrong medication is uh, easier said theoretically than uh, in uh, uh, reality. So uh, defense for the charge of negligence uh, in case of recept allocator uh, could be done that uh, the physician could claim that the patient had undergone a separate uh, um, operation after he has uh, conducted his operation or it was because of uh, prior operation, and it, he was not the one who has uh, forgot the swaps or the goes there. Uh, the other one is if, even though the swaps were retained, if the physician could prove that the patient did not suffer any damage, it did not complicate, it did not cause abscess, it did not cause perforations. So, if there is no direct uh, cause of damage, still uh, the physician could go on an easier uh, uh, action. So in abortion cases, uh, still uh, he might have, he might uh, defend himself by, uh, it was because of earlier attempts uh, of abortion than his own trial. Or the patient has undergone another uh, attempt of abortion after she has visited uh, the current physician in question. So what's contributory negligence? Again, this is a, uh, um, 
contributory negligence? What's the role of the patient uh, in the medical practice, in the medical ethics cover medical topic now? However, contributory negligence mallet, still uh, there is a contribution negligence on the act of the physician, but still the patient has contributed. So he cannot, the patient cannot blame the physician uh, solely for the uh, caused damage. So uh, unless in criminal cases, in criminal negligence, if there is uh, contributory negligence to be proven uh, to have been done by the patient, the case of uh, medical negligence and reciprocal equator do not uh, uh, fulfill. So here is a case where the patient was uh, accused of contributory negligence and uh, her sue for uh, damages uh, were denied. So she told the physician that she had abdominal pain and all and uh, uterine fibroids were uh, diagnosed. And in her, uh, in, during the interview, she said that she had been, uh, she had been abstaining from sexual uh, intercourse since uh, a couple of years, since three years. So the doctor did not do pregnancy test, but he went on uh, operating the patient. So during the operation, he found that she was a few weeks pregnant and operation was terminated. But unfortunately, after a few weeks, she lost the child uh, spontaneously. So she went on and sued the physician for the loss of her child. But since she has misinformed the patient, since she had contributed to the act of negligence, her plea was denied. So if there is a contributory negligence on the side of the patient, uh, medical negligence would be um, at least partly uh, declined. So what's Novus Actus intervenes? In this case, unrelated action intervenes in a course. Uh, so this could uh, happen for the physician or against the physician. So there is a, uh, a person was shot by a firearm and he was operated and in the operation, the swabs and gauzes were left in the abdomen. So patients developed intra-abdominal abscess and intestinal perforation subsequently. Uh, but the assailant was, since the physician intervened in the normal course of the um, patient, the initial person who uh, shot the patient was only uh, accused of the initial shot. Uh, when the patient died, it was proven that the physician had left uh, gauzes and swabs, and that was uh, the cause of death. So uh, the act was intervened. So the other one is, is a negligence civil or uh, criminal. Civil mibalo, uh, civil wrong, no civil negligence, no mibalo, reasonable care and skill, laxiadark. So between two parties in their individual capacities. In terms of the law, in terms of the law, crime, in terms of the law, negligent act, no uh, The other one is, if there is no action or injury or damage, it's a civil, uh, civil negligence cannot happen. Contrary negligence can be a defense in civil negligence. The standard of proof, rests upon the balance of probabilities. And finally, if the physician is accused of a civil negligence, is just uh, liable to pay damages. So instance of a civil negligence, uh, this is uh, a boy who, shot, who was shot on his arm. And then uh, during the removal process, uh, repeated X-ray was done because they could not localize the uh, bullet retained in the arm. And then because of the repeated x-ray, the boy developed ulceration. He had, uh, he required plastic surgery and the movement of the arm was limited. And at the end, uh, this was just a, an instance of civil negligence. There was no criminal intent in this. It was just a negligent act. It was just a civil wrong. Uh, so it, it sees the balance of the decision is finally on the balance of probabilities. 
there is no clear cut act of crime. So in this uh, other case, uh, a boy of five years, a child of five years was diagnosed with bacterial meningitis and he received excess amounts as accused by the family. And at the end, uh, he was cured of uh, the meningitis, but he was left with uh, permanent loss of hearing. So the family accused the treating team to have given him uh, excess penicillin and uh, they wanted to sue the uh, medical team. But the court uh, evaluated the chance of probabilities, balance of probabilities, and since they could not settle if the hearing loss was due to the initial uh, condition of meningitis or because of the excess amounts of penicillin, the uh, sue of uh, negligence was uh, cleared off. So, however, the, uh, had he been treated early and all, and since deafness is a serious injury, uh, it could be a civil negligence, but it could not be proven that it was a negligent act because of the excess uh, medication. And so in civil negligence, it's a balance of probabilities that the court sees. So uh, criminal negligence, it's the gross carelessness. And it's uh, 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 puts the life of the patient in danger. So this is not a case between the patient and the doctor. It's usually a case between the state and the accused doctor. Even in the case where the patient does not want to carry on with the case, the state takes over such cases and uh, clears of criminal intent. Uh, so in this case, it cannot be the whole team. It's just, it has to come to the responsibilities of individuals. Uh, so even though uh, there is no actual damage, the risk of it causing a damage and the background of criminal intent, gross uh, recklessness, uh, gross carelessness, endangering the life of the patient, is enough. So the standard of proof requires, it's not a balance between possibilities. It needs to be proven that the physician was guilty beyond reasonable doubt. There shouldn't be in criminal negligence and in physician when jalenya below label yadaragosalahuna, it should be beyond reasonable doubt. And uh, accused doctor punish, punish, punishment imprisonment or fine or both. It depends on the penal code of the nation. So uh, these are examples of uh, criminal negligence, not performing sensitivity tests since anaphylaxis, anaphylactic shock is a life-threatening patient, is a life-threatening condition, not doing sensitivity tests, uh, injecting anesthetics in excess or wrong tissue, leaving tourniquets for too long, so in this case, it doesn't matter if the limb went gangrenous or not. The risk of leaving the tourniquet for too long is life-threatening one, and it has to come from a negligence, uh, carelessness act of the medical practitioner. So with corrosive flu fluids, dressing masrat, uh, performing criminal abortions, and transfusing with infected bl blood. These are some examples of criminal negligence. Even though the damage is not there, still the doctor is uh, responsible and punishable for the, the gross negligence act that endangered life. Uh, beyond the acts, certain patterns of conduct uh, also as negligence uh, considered that So certain patterns of conduct still and the criminal negligence considered leader Gucciolalu. Uh, uh, failure to resuscitate on time in a vegetative state for a longer than required, for a longer time than needed. Magoyet, uh, tolo resuscitative action of Chen Alamoset, or in the past, dangerous and home activity of Chen, risk of danger ignore Argo, Tamalet, Makatar. So the fact that the uh, Doctor had involved in such cases in the past. Rasu beki, then care and do a stimulate no. Or 
more for financial gains miaskedu improper motive lemisale still in the criminal negligence uh, unnecessary and not just enough financial gain un bicha consider yaderege conduct tim indihu in the criminal negligence uh, consider li dabeg ichila uh, so this is a instance of criminal negligence uh, this is a case where a doctor at a delivery clinic uh, failed to refer a woman who had a difficult labor uh, he did not refer her until 5 days even though she was uh, in in ill health said ulay correction as well while the patient was in ill health in the subsequent days tablo correct madaragalbet so soon me yaye bihon he did not refer her so while her life was in danger he was ignorant to the case so after she was referred after 5 days uh, to the at the hospital two days which aqoita she died so the patient uh, the doctor at the delivery clinic was accused of criminal negligence so beyond reasonable doubt uh, guilt proved it direct malet no criminal negligence so what therapeutic misadventure or mishap when injury or even it could be death of a patient uh, due to inadvertent or unintentional action of a medical personnel or his agent or hospital uh, injury happen adrugal gen uh, intentional al nebere no selezi uh, lemsale when you are a patient of uh, side effects of a drug ya common ihonutin potentially occur li yaragu michilutin no mitnagerut adel so in the case that that am rare complication happen biyarek it's a therapeutic misadventure or kazi befit ma yitawaq neger still because of the drug or the treatment procedure or the diagnostic procedure at uh, happen bearag uh, negligence yellem izale gross carelessness yellem uh, possible side effects uh, tanegrawal uh, risk ot tanegrawal gin still unforeseen yihone neger happen kaderege even though injury or damage be norm still negligence adella malet that's what therapeutic misadventure means so uh, in order to be safe from uh, professional negligence there are things that the medical practitioner is advised to do ya majamara yo neger updates on the practice keep marag betam kebizu actions save yadergal lela in confirming a diagnosis repeated lab tests all possible option or alternatives exhaust marag taru no dan Uh, of course emergency kohone set up u allow kal aderege time in used kohone menamen still acceptable li hon chilal gen if you have time diagnosis and confirm marag ikadmal dan going into therapy lela whenever indicated x rays and imaging it's good to perform consultation betam lela save mi yaregaw neger no Uh, so uh, prophylactic antibiotics or vaccinations sensitivity tests masalat bemichilu bet gize hulu sensitivity tests should be done and it should be kept the physician should keep uh, updates uh, list to sensitivity test misarralacho dragot updated li hon selemichil uh, update of the knowledge uh, is very good lela uh, wrong drug administer lala madrag በተቻለ 3 አራት ሰው ቬሪፋይ ቢያርክ ቢያነብ ትክክል መሆኑ ለሴድ ድራግ ፕሪስክሪፕሽኑንም ደጋግሞ ኦርደሩንም ደጋግሞ እና በኦርደሩ ኮንፈርታብል ካልሆነ አይ አድሚስትራ ላረግ ማለት ይቻላል ኔሰሰሪሊ ሲኒየር ስላዘዘ ወይ ምናምን ዳት ዳዝንት ሴፍ ኦርደር ሆኝ ነው ሚላው ነገር ማለት ነው እና ድራጉን በተቻለ ስፔሻሊ እንደዚህ ዲስካሪያሲስ ኮዝ የሚያደርጉ የተለያዩ ድራጎች ሴንሲቲቭ ድራግስ ሲሆኑ 3 አራት ሰው ሌብሉ ሌብል ከተቀየረም ላይክ አሁን በፕላስተር ምናም እንቀይራለናል እንደሱ ከሆነም ኢንፎርም መዳራረክ ቆንጆ ነው the other thing is uh, avoid engaging beyond skill uh, lelo don't experiment therapies on patients don't uh, act on what you don't know before 
already verified yihona neger kalo ne beqar don't research and experiment on patients so infamous unethical conduct na professional negligence mindin no difference u milaw neger sinay unethical conduct ndalkut uh, it's violation of codes of uh, codes and ethics of medical practice uh, necessarily uh, the reduction of duty na damage line or ichilal it's the state's medical council deal mi yarego uh, result to warning lihon ichilal or erasure of the license and name of the uh, physician temporarily or permanently lihon ichilal uh, kaza appealable no to the government to higher court mehid ichalal malatno it's the decision by medical council so to the court mehid ichalal even to the council appeal marak ichalal professional negligence can see home it's with the it's not with codes of uh, ethics it's not with rules it's with the duties of the medical practitioner and towards the patient uh, there should be the four components uh, fulfilled and with professional negligence it's the court that deals with the case uh, so under the penal court punishable law so it happens at a court of law instance no higher court of nature appeal on me it malet uh so liability man no mitayek when there is a medical negligence malet no who is liable milon no miyayo so there are different approaches vicarious liability borrowed servant approach man bibalu negaroch allu vicarious liability malet let the master answer in the malet no uh, captain of the ship uh, approach ibala this is uh, whatever uh, happens in the hospital the physician is uh, responsible in the malet no the most senior one is responsible in the malet no borrowed servant in terms of uh, uh, individual responsibilities in the malet no so vicarious liability uh, occur miyaregbacho cases which are themselves junior medical staffs non medical staffs and all see home the hospital is accountable uh, again uh, independently work le miyaregu sewoch master to servant relationship le lelacho themselves senior doctors honorary staffs and all le nessu hospitalu uh, accountable adellem malet no so uh, this is the vicarious responsibility in summary when is the hospital management hold accountable when is the doctor hold accountable where is the when is the individual uh, accountable milon no meyo hospital management and uh, alput for the senior uh, staff for the senior doctor uh, responsible adella uh, the only responsibility is professionally properly qualified na experienced staff meqtar bicha no mitabekebet kazawchi physician for residents and interns much no responsibility mi hono milo under his direct watch lemsale operating theater lay la nurse la internu la residentu senior surgeon responsible no under his direct watch no okar yaderega yallo lemsale even internistu on call kohona whatever the resident does or the intern does zaga tagain to under his direct watch skal hone address and responsible lai hone chilal malat no so uh, injury to the third party sihi malat physician patient to lal hone so damage tatayaki sihon malat no lemsale uh, if a patient is epileptic he should the doctor should warn the epileptic patient the causes uh, the possible dangers the injuries the risks uh, so lemsale drive yaderega and epileptic patient drive yaderega accident ust sees biaregna accident ust involved biaregna la physicianu patient yal nebere so bi godda if the doctor could prove that he has warned the patient that he should not uh, omit his medications sijaru controlled mohon allebet in such activities as swimming driving namen involve maragel lebhem bilo warn maragun prove marag michel ko hone documented neger kallo endezi endezi kallo he is not responsible however if he did not warn him zaga be epileptic patient to 
ምክንያት ሬክለስ ቢሄቪየር ምክንያት ለጠፋው የሰው አካል ኢቨን ዶ አንደር ዳይሬክት ዲዩቲ ባይ ሆንም ስቲል ፊዚሻን ሪስፖንሲብል ነው ማለት ነው። so medical product liability this includes drugs and medical equipments uh, so what's the physician responsible for as a learned immediate person warn marak itapekebetal of dangers and side effects and all lelaw neger when involving in surgeries and uh, anesthesia equipments and men masratachon betkekel የሰሩ እንደሆነ whenever they fail fail ማረጋቸው ሪፖርት ማረግ አለበት and all so uh, he know your physician liability in medical products so this are this is it it's hard to say but the relevant questions and let's address those uh, in the session okay she so የመጀመሪያው what can i do in order to get certificate ይላል ይሰማል አይደል ብዙም ክሊር ስላልሆነ ምን ለማለት እንደሆነ እሱን ለለፈው ከዛ is all kind of advertising infamous ilal it's a very good question ይሰማል አይደል መልሶ yes it is ይሰማል እሺ so advertising ያው እኛ ሀገር ያለውን ሩል አላቀም ግን usually medical council Uh, what's ethical advertising milawon neger define marag allebet kaza the law demo alladella sum define yadergalna so still law mi fakdacho extent hono still medical council by the code of ethics kekel adellem for the population hona wrong impression ifetral when the medical practice in such way advertised mohone yellebetum kala infamous lihon ichilal gin the very act of advertising kulle infamous no malet adellem and mostly for the law tan adellem so the medical council infamous advertising way allowed advertising meche no and if you see for the indians at this practice mi jamir ko hone astawaq ichilal or at this mode of investigation or namen kale or at this sub specialist kale without mentioning the name doctor anten anten ayegnal lezi nam sail indian law no nagrat indian code of ethics ndeza milu nagaroch allacho na yenya nagar le defined adellem keza the law demo min ayinet advertising no offense lo mi yaskemtacho inoral so code of ethics against the law the constitutional law mehed aychilem like lemsale uh, code of ethics or the conventional law medical practice bafsum advertised mohon yellebetum kale code of ethics should uh, abide by that gin law yihon yakel mi faqid ko hone under that entenoch maarag ichilal ndet no amendments maarag ichilal law yefeqadaw bemulu yifqad malet adellem still freedom allo so melsh ko kohona alaqum gin definition defined yona code of conduct illam enya gar to my knowledge regarding the medical so how does the medical council maintain anonymity if it responds only to written complaints especially when related to fellow colleague so written complaints sihon yaw medical councilu entenun report maregna complaint marag illa yalla adal sti jemer so infamous conduct way unethical conduct yesaru no colleague colleague yebelo kasaba report marag ucha yebakal so medical council ignore marag achil matarat allebet so if you could prove yanen in written mastatachun prove marag mitchilu ko hone you don't have to go by your name further meqayet tichilallachu men darasa yalachu malas no ya neger follow ma anonymously follow ma arek chalal eh kaza uchi gin enten ko hone ndes no accuse min arek ko hone of a certain someone anonymous mo hone aichilem enten accusation so reporting unethical conduct ko hone anonymously mo hone chilal gin accusation ko hone of a fellow colleague 
complaint callan still the name inta uh, mabal yallebet and we trust the medical council to do uh, the investigation anonymously otherwise somebody endezi yadergoñal weyim somebody treat yareg indi honal kallen yannenem saw identify maregallebin complaint um identify maderegallebet anonymous inten accusation mehona ichil reporting gin anonymously mehona ichil is terminating mechanical ventilation in brain dead patients allowed in our country some institutions have included it if some criteria are met aw nya gar yallawun enten alaqam gin brain dead universally textoch allu brain dead confirm idderegbet brain dead na brain stem dead so la brain dead mechanical ventilation indicated adellem male termination indicated adellem because brain stem days no mi asfelgo usually days in telemal eventually the patient should die minus the mechanical ventilation brain days gun brain asfelgo the existence normally brain stem no la existence mi asfelgo so in the vegetative cadaver and the living cadaver menor kamaratwa i guess la brain days aqwartu mil enten yella it depends on the law of the country እኛ ሀገር ክሊየርሊ የተቀመጠ ነገር አላቀም ብሬን ስቴም ዳይዝ ግን ኮንፈርም ማድረግ ከተቻለ የሚጠየቁ ስፔሻሊቲዎች አሉ ሰብ ስፔሻሊስት ፎረንሲክ ስፔሻሊስቱ ኒውሮሎጂስት እንደዚህ እንደዚህ ትሪቲንግ ፊዚሻን ሌላ ኢንትረስቴድ ሌላቸው ሰዎች በሰውየው ዳይዝ ዳይሬክት ኢንትረስቴድ ሌላቸው ስፔሻሊቲስት እና እንደዚህ ሜዲካል ዳይሬክተር እናም ተጣርቶ terminate madarak ichilal mechanical ventilation criteria on yemu alla ko hone min malat no without the mechanical ventilation the patient would die milaw neger confirm katadarag la brain days gin i'm not sure na criteria on deza ailem inde law of a country ngidi liqamet ichilal kani bene knowledge ndeza lay yihon Um, currently in ethiopia an unwanted laboratory is ordered and they are making an advertisement saying that dr x will work here how can it correct according to medical legal she konjo neger no yaw indalkut somebody nya gari sabal ma milaw neger in terms of promoting the individual mahon aichelum or ethical adella individualun saihon serviceun promote bemiyareg melku announce maareg ichalal ብዙ ጊዜ ኤቲክ ሜዲካል ካውንስሉ ህጉም ይሆነ ያክል ነበር ያስቀምጣል ይሄን ያክል ነበር ግዜ አድቨርታይዝ ከተደረገ with certain medias በቲቪ ሲሆን አድረሰብሊቲው ይሆነ ያክል ነው ሬዲዮ ሲሆን ጋዜጣ ሲሆን ምናም ምናም ተብሎ so በጋዜጣ ይሄን ያክል በቲቪ ይሄን ያክል ምናም ተብሎ ቲቪ ላይም በየትኛው ሚዲያ ሰው በጣም ይሰማው ምናም እንደዛ እንደዚህ ተብሎ and in terms of promoting the service not promoting the individual so yanen service mi felgo bizu in dire need yallu sewoch yinoru ichilalu so advertisementu there may be an actual legitimate need li noru ichilal unwanted laboratory milaw again tinish ambiguous no what's an unwanted laboratory case to case illa yayal ከ facility facility ላይ ያያል ምን አይነት capacity ነው ያለን ምን አይነት facility ነው ያለን የሚለው ነገር ማታሪ ያረጋል ግን አሁን in the face of physicians facing in the ብዙ litigationዎች face ያደረጉ ባለበት ሁኔታ ለ confirmation you should go as much as you could በየነው ማሰቦ so unwanted laboratory subjective ነው physicianu ያንን ነገር ፕሩፍ ማድረግ በጣም አስቸጋሪ ነው አንሪሌትድ ነው ብሎ እንት ማለት ያንን ነገር ማዘዝ አይችልም ማለት አንደኛ ፕሮፌሽናል ፍሪደሙንም ማሳጣት ነው ሁለተኛ እንደ የኬዙ ይለያያል ዋትስ አን አንዋንትድ ፎር ሚ ሜቢ አን ዋንትድ እንድ ነሰሰሪ ፎር ዘ ኬዝ አንድ ፎር ዘ ትሪቲንግ ፊዚሽያን ስለዚህ ብዙ ማያስኬድ ማን አንዋንትድ ላብራቶሪ አን አንዋንትድ ላብራቶሪ የሚለው ነገር ማለት ነው ኢትስ ጀስት አሊጌሽን ነው የሚሆነው ሺ ቴንክ ዩ ፎር ዩር ናይስ ፕረዘንቴሽን ቴንክ ዩ ፎር ሃቪንግ ሚ ስለሰማችሁኝ በጣም አመሰግናለሁ ሶ 
And you're welcome. I do have two questions. How do you see the role and scope of medias in disclosure and seldom blaming of clinicians during suspected medical errors in our country, even without having any evidence? So him and the Yakezu evidence woman did no evidence woman Adelam Milo Nagar's cousin is Maragas Felgal. Again, medical conditions alone have a because it goes to hospital, it goes to does the reputation of Chintan Sela Milva Mil, minimum minor coverage, Magnet Hachelum Media, yeah, hospital good doubt and I income I let a child. Then your case one reporting one alone evidence, now I'm title and the Yakezu in Laya. Is there any medical legal book? Uh, is there any medical legal written book? You said just into uh, yeah, yeah, forensic uh, conditional topical lacho. So forensic metaphor magnitude general textbooks of forensic medicine, forensic pathologists and forensic medicine. And now medical jurisprudence in Ila Kaganyachu in Ethiopia and Metaphor no Mako. He had come now as an Amgabar by Ethiopia meet. Uh, I think that person also runs uh, uh, you know, a medical association and uh, medical legal association or something in the mill. So soon uh, subsequently share my regular logan and the Metaf and Dalak are the common mass number of Ethiopia mill. Metaf so far any Jela Yaga Bosu channel in general, again, medical ethics now. Medical error and negligence in Milton Nagaruch, forensic medicine in medical jurisprudence in Rumas Afro Expo Coach Kaganya, too. I would recommend that. She, yeah, come in a statistic, Cassatu, and Andy Hegakala, police, Palaman, but good person, Mala Labin Lodge, Christopher Tarnalan, Manana Tasta, Talish, but Tavir, no response, gentlemen, they get a bit. So that step is strong, generally. Mendenamilo ethicsum, yeah, hegum, even statement to whatever ethical wrong, the mihun professional negligence, the mihun criminal, the mihun rasu, hakimun haras maragas felgum. Tatarto expert witness, Tawasto medical counsel, consultant, father, go evidence which they have about Kazabuhalan. And without speaking to the physician, label which and then maala thei la pachom progress maara gel la pachom. Ba fata bir na wis ponjel na mete ek al la pachom mila na gar anda ke zuil la ida. Because a criminal and dal ko thamo civil negligence lihon chalal or unethical conduct lihon chalal or criminal negligence lihon chalal. So lazi it depends on the case. Otherwise, can like you want to see that he mulutim on police detain me or go nagar. I can't say that enough, but I'm wrong practice now. Error which occur in prescription and red medication mislead the pharmacist and gives wrong drug due to the patient. How do you see it as such type of case? Okay, prescriptionun prescriptionu lay minden neta sa sa tau legible handwriting. So it's just an ethical wrong. Your medical ethics is nine nine violent patient physician. Legible bohone handwriting with a file, but which all type of other go through no because of the unrecognized abbreviations avoided mona lapacho secret remedies met a camilla petam end of the ethical wrong. No, uh, unread medication cohona pharmacist to get any sign this pain smart drug illa petam. So it goes to the pharmacist liability. Wrong dose and still pharmacist to busy dose dispense maragilla in bloom a caracar alabet. Even comfortable calona, my let's see, chalal. Kazauchi, how far has it gone, Milonagar? Wrong drug. Dispense lemon darabu, manga no milona grandalcut, yaw kezu dissect cider gositai, whether and so mamta to Yasfelga, yon and so intermenel corner, malasin. 
so eligible handwriting proved mahon ka chale the physician could be at uh, uh, unethical conduct no misconduct no uh, crime adella eligible handwriting kalile uh, wonjalenya na mil neger yello intentionally mislead argotal pharmacist na mi bal neger sun prove la maarak betam aschekari no criminal intentions ost menoru kazawchi pharmacist to dispense la rago drug pharmacist no tetayaki if is not comfortable algabany or da wullo metayek or de gami tsafelim bilo melak or endezi negeroch malet no so ya medical ethics kasaran seminar kallen sile eligible handwriting gna yalla so that's it gin still dispense yetedaragaw neger wrong drug ko hona the pharmacist is at fault since we're going to have another session on uh, on, on another virtual seminar with you let's yeah. uh, let's conclude the session right thank you so oh, much you. uh, you're welcome thank you for having me yeah. Uh, yeah. so it's a pleasure yeah. to have you here we hope uh, yeah. to see you on another uh, virtual seminar really soon uh, uh, i hope so too <laughs> yeah we'll contact you all right yeah you. all right so good night everyone yeah.